Hello, good morning, good evening, good night. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably just like me. You want a photo software that is quite capable, but you don't really need the whole Adobe universe. And you don't want to pay like every month a subscription for a software. Let me just start recording. So let's go straight to business. The software that I'm talking about and that I'm using is Pixelmator Pro. I think that it's only available for Apple, but really if you're not using a MacBook for your photos and your videos, like, eh, uh, don't want to tell you what to do, but like, yeah, I was, I was on Windows before, like that's a life changer to use. A MacBook so yeah I don't remember the exact price but it was somewhere between 20 or 30 euros and once you pay for it you own it like completely you don't need to pay every month it's yours you get the updates when it's when you have some new updates just as a comparison Adobe if I if I just look so the complete creative cloud is 67 euros per month and it's just photography it's 11 so like 12 euros per month so like yeah in three months pixel matter pro is cheaper than an adobe subscription right so now let's dive into what it can do so i personally think that there are a lot of possibilities with this software but to be honest i don't even use it to its full potential um i'm pretty sure there are many things that i don't know how to do with this software there was a period of my life where i like to take photos and really manipulate them have different layers a ton of things like this i don't do this anymore so i like to take photos that are more like travel or documentary styles no big modifications in the edit or anything like this just move a bit the light or the colors or these things but that's it but there are more possibilities with this software. Uh, I'm going to have a look at my photos from Dublin. I have just started editing them, so I'm going to show you with that. Right. <clears throat> so, there you go. You can have both sides open. So on the left side here, you've got all your layers. So you can add really simply layers like this. Okay, you can show the opacity. You can choose the layering mode here. That's for your layers. On this side, on the right side, you have all your tools. So we've got here, arrange, so move, rotate and resize layers. So you can just there you have obviously your little uh, keyboard shortcuts. So command minus to zoom out. Command minus, command minus, command plus now. There you go. Um, just easy stuff. So there we can arrange. So let's say you have your layers. And I have yellow. And choose change your opacity darken but let's say that it's normal so orange you can just grab one grab it size it move it around whatever there you go there are your layers you can block them if you want or there you go mask it there You've got style, customize the look of layers by applying fill, strokes and shadows. So this one we need to create. So there you go, for example, we have this layer there. If we want to change the fill, change the fill, stroke, so that's around there. The inner shadow, there you go, you know what that is, the shadow, right, I'm not going to show you into details, that's not really the point of this video, um, just really to show you that it's, it's a great software for 20 or 30 euros, 
that can do a lot of things. Now, let's say, yeah, uh, that's that's this one. So, color adjustments, fine tune, or completely change the colors of images. That's the one that, as a photographer, you might use the most. You have all this sort of like filters, I would say, that are um, already in there. You can try. So, like, we have modern films. You, know, you can just. That's all uh, presets, basically. There you go. But then you can obviously fine tune everything that you want. You don't have to stick to what's already done. Cinematic. You, know, you have all these different modes, you can go black and white, you have all this choice of like black and white settings and you can add obviously yours, so those are mine there. So um, I've only done two because then, because I, I like to keep a look that remains sort of consistent. So those are my favorite settings for color and black and white and then obviously I will change things um, as I need to change them so I can just adjust like the curves like the whatever I need to adjust I can adjust there are a lot of things level, levels so we got the histogram there white balance and then you see ml that's basically the, the let me just reset that's basically the software trying to do like um it's not IA, but it's trying to do like an intelligent um, editing. There you go. So you can have this sort of ML enhance, and then you can just like, there you see minus one, and then you can just do your own if you want. So you can see this little button at the bottom next to reset, really interesting because you can see with and um, without the edit, you maintain the button pressed and you can see before after before after so there you go so as i said we have the histogram the white balance you can just uh, your basic uh, light settings exposure highlights shadows and so on selective clarity hue and saturation selective color really nice tool really like that you know, you can just have fun. Color balance, really good too. Levels, curves, you can replace color, remove color, create um, fade. You can fine tune your black and white if you want. That's very nice if you're really into black and white. Uh, that's a very interesting tool or we'll just switch the tone completely uh, color monochrome so yeah you know you can just have fun uh, channel mixer you can import you have LUTs that are already in there, but you can create your own. I'm going to go back to that in a second. Vignettes, if you want to know what vignetting is. Uh, sharpen or create some grain. Alright, so I'm going to reset that and I will show you the LUT thing uh, with my own setting. So my color setting. Um, basically, I had done this color, little color setting at first without the LUTs, but then I thought that something was missing from it, you know, it was basically like that and I thought something is missing and I had a look at the LUTs that were there, uh, what did I have, I think cinematic LUTs was already there. Let's put it to a hundred so that you can see a bit more the effect. Right, cinematic LUTs. They were, those cinematic LUTs were already in there. And I was like, yeah, that is uh, nice because 
those cinematic lights, cinematic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I realized that those cinematic lots are actually the same that are in the cinematic uh, presets. So except that when you choose a preset, you can fine tune everything, but you can't just ask to be like at 60% of the presets. However, when you are, so I'm going back to my personal one, when you are here, so no lots and a lot, Let's imagine you want, you like the cin cinematic preset. Which one? Let's go for, I don't know, let's do one, it doesn't matter. But you don't want it to be 100%, you just want it at 40%, for example. Then you can do that. Or like, even you could have like absolutely nothing, right? So like that's perfectly blank, no modifications. But all you want is the cinematic preset number number four. But you don't want a hundred percent. You just want something like thirty percent. You're like, oh yeah, that's a little bit of difference, but not too much, and that's all I want. So you maybe you just enjoy it like this. You're like, yeah, I like it like this. I don't want a hundred percent. That's just too much. I want thirty percent. That's just what I need. And there you go. So I realized that and I basically just created the same thing but by using the filters here called modern films and classic films because there were a lot of those presets that I actually liked but I thought they were like too heavy like absolutely no subtlety in those that was just like like that's really too much when you have something like this like modern film one it's just really heavy modifications and I don't like that but when I use my own personal color thing as you can see by default I've used modern film 1 that I'm putting at only 40% of intensity so that's a way to use it you see there is a real difference but it's not as heavy as um, using the modern film one preset. So there you go. And then there are a lot of other, other tools on the side. So let's see those. So effects change the look of layers by applying effects like blur, tile, distortion and others. So we got a lot of, you know, like sort of artistic. Uh, what do we have in artistic? We have yeah, this. Or you can try this or you can try this you can really have fun with a lot of, of things you got photographic effects you've got a rectangular selection or if you double click you hope you can um, change that oh god uh, no wait a minute I'm just going to get rid of the, the effect how do I do no, there you go thank you I just wanted to get rid of that so if you double click you've got the choice rectangular selection elliptical and you can change that row selection column selection when you see the little arrow there you can double click so there you can double click again and free selection polygonal or magnetic so that's the sort of stuff where you can just let's imagine you have rectangular selection you want to get rid of this and then you just like delete with the little back arrow there you go delete it and then command d you unselect or command z you undo and command D and select you know there are a lot of um, it's really intuitive to use I, I've I've used Photoshop for a few years before that and it was really easy to switch to this because you just I mean it's just really intuitive to to use basically then quick selection color selection I'm just going to take this away because I don't like it uh, you've got your little uh, pencil paint or pixel paint 
you've got the little uh, bucket of paints, color fill, that's the one I've used before. You've got your eraser, erase or smart erase, uh, the little band-aid, it's sort of like, oh wait, the little band-aid, so you can just, I don't know, do -do -do -do. what did you do actually, yeah, you know, like in Photoshop basically. Let's have fun, I don't know, let's have fun, what can it do if I just do that? I don't know, that's not the sort of tool that I use and that I think most photographers who do like normal, just simple modifications are using, I don't think, but oh my god. So yeah, let's uh, not do this. There we have clone, copy part of an image from one area to another. Uh, oh my god, dear lord, where, where am I? Aha, uh -huh. no, we don't want to do that. But you get the idea, it's the same in Photoshop, that's not the sort of thing that they use. Here we have sharpen, soften or smudge. Um, here we have lighten or darken, saturate or desaturate. Warp, well, bump, pinch, twirl, you know, all these sort of little tools. There you have the pen or the freeform pen to draw uh, whatever you need. So, like, let's create. Uh, we are in regular no, pen. Yeah. You can just have fun. Let's make it bigger. So that's the free form pen again. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you can just grab it. So I'm with the arrow now. You know, just have fun. Whatever. Let's delete this atrocity. Free form pen. Free form pen. Yeah, you can draw. Whatever makes you happy, little clouds, little flowers, little trees. Be the Bob Ross of pixel matter if you want. There you go. And you can obviously with that again, you see there we are on this main tool. So the, the pen, the freeform pen. But as we are here, we can add shadow. You see the shadow, we're taking the shadow. Way. because we also have this that's selected at the same time okay can get rid of the shadow we can uh, uh, not blur it there you go we can change the color of the shadow maybe we want it Yellow, yeah, let's go for yellow, darker the yellow. Look how beautiful that is. I don't know, that's, that's not, let's not do that. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we can do like shapes, so all sorts of shapes. You know, with lines and arrows and whatnot. Have fun with, you know, whatever, donuts, bicycle whatever makes your heart happy we can type really interesting um i use this obviously a lot for like thumbnails and this sort of things on youtube uh, just really you know here is some text yay and um, so you can choose whatever you want Remember that if there's a font that you like, you can search for it on Google Fonts. If it's there, you download it and then you can find it on your software. So that's really cool. Like, I don't know, what do you want? What do you want? Uh, PF Video Text Pro, that one is cool. Oh, I had not selected this. 
so we want PF Video Text Pro and we want it bigger maybe and you know what even if you reach 2000 you can just type in something bigger if you oh no you can't you can't okay you can't here is some text so we are happy because we have some text we can choose you can obviously change the color here change the color here the alignments and all that you can just tweak a few things but obviously you can go again in your little like paintbrush thing there the style thing and then you can change a lot of things again so fill it's for some reason it's by default when you click on that it's but you see if i take it away it's it's blue so let's put the color that we want there you go uh, or obviously as always uh, you have there you go color picker so you can choose different that's in the in the little pencil thing but you can choose you know whatever whatever makes you happy there you have more more colors there more colors whatever makes you happy i like to use the crayons very good that's a nice yellow you can obviously have strokes but that's not nice that's not what we want for a look that's just taking over inner shadow have inner shadow go. inner shadow or shadows regular shadows we go distance let's up, up, up. there you go some nice shadows there and we can blur them i've actually discovered that if you put the distance to zero it's basically um and you put the blur to whatever you need it's basically just behind so you can still create with the blur you can have shadow that's equal there is no um, inclination of the shadow that's very nice some shadows there you go so you have your text then you can use the zoom so zoom and navigate images uh, yeah why not you can just use the command minus or command plus again you don't really need to use that tool and this crop tool i use actually quite a bit crop so crop and straighten images um that's also very nice one important thing to do if you want uh to change like to crop but you want to keep the same format is to go there and keep it to original that this way you can just you know change and it's keeping the same format but if you have some nice photos that you want to use for example as a thumbnail on youtube you go there and you put this format of 16.9 and then you have the youtube format for the thumbnail and you can choose really whatever you want um yeah so let's keep it like this you can straighten so if you've got an horizon line that's a bit wonky you can just you know straighten it by the way if you double click on a cursor for example there you double click on it and it's setting it back to zero there you go vertical you can just when you have buildings that are not like properly straight but for example i don't like to use this too much because it might distort a little bit the image but there you see if you we try that that's still okay and horizontal same thing but horizontal and like for example there have yeah you see that's a really great software with a lot of possibilities i'm not sure that it's the most in-depth review of this software or like any software that you've seen um that's not really the goal the idea is that i've been using this software for a few years now and at the time i was really looking for something that was quite advanced 
But at the same time, what I wanted remained sort of simple in terms of photo editing. And I wanted something that was nice to use, that was really cheap. I just, I was just sick of paying for a subscription every month. And so I found this software that was affordable, that was really nice to use, good looking with all the tools that I need. And yeah, it's quite perfect for my use. So I thought that I would share that with you and maybe you will find it perfect for you too. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you tomorrow for the next video.